Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to talk to you about EGRs, or Exhaust Gas Recirculation Systems. All right, uh, these little devices were developed in the 1970s. It was an interesting time. People wanted to make the cars run cleaner and produce less carbons and hydrocarbons. And at the same time, with the fuel crisis, they wanted to get better mileage. Now, the way to complete both means, or both ends, was uh, the means of making your engines run leaner, adjusting the carburetors. Engines are supposedly ha supposed to have about 14.67, 14.7 uh, or so uh, parts of air to fuel. All right, and they would lean it out so there was more air than fuel in the mixture. All right, so much so that the cylinder heads, all right, the parts that you know basically meet with the pistons, uh, were getting really, really hot. Uh, sometimes over 2,500 degrees in certain parts, and what that meant was that now they're creating a bunch of weird nitrogen particles, little nitrogen oxides that would go up into the atmosphere and create things like smog and acid rain. The government said we got to put a stop to this, so we need to develop a device, or basically get the auto manufacturers to develop a device that would prevent uh, so much nitrogen particles from being produced. And they came out with the EGR. Now this is a simple little diagram of kind of what a very basic EGR is like. Now there's all different types. There's types that as the vacuum applied to it increases, it actually uh, reduces the amount of exhaust into the, the engine's intake manifold. But this is the basic type. Essentially what we have here is a little vacuum port. The engine brings in air. And as it brings in air, it creates a suction force. And that suction force is applied to this device. The more suction force uh, applied, it actually lifts this little diaphragm, this little flexible piece here up. And this is like a little needle valve, and this fits into your exhaust manifold where the exhaust goes before it meets your mufflers and everything like that. All right, and like I said, as the vacuum is applied, this part lifts up, and that provides all the exhaust gas to go into your engine where it does the important things it needs to do. All right, um, basically, what how an EGR works is it's like this. Your engine, let's say, is running lean or is just running and it's producing nitrogen particles. And what's going to happen is your cylinder heads are going to get really, really hot. Hot running cylinder heads, all right, form the bad guys, all the little nitrogen things we don't want. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in exhaust gas. Now, some people say, well, exhaust gas, that's not really good for a motor. And perhaps that's the case, but here's the little deal here, all right. Um, the problem is hot heat in a motor. And even though exhaust gas is hot, which seems silly, the exhaust gas is actually uh, acting as an inert noble gas. What's going to happen is it's going to take up space. Imagine I had like a box and it was the perfect mixture of air and fuel. Okay, well that means that there's a certain amount of potential energy in that box. Now if I start taking up space in that box, kind of like when you put rocks in a bucket and you can't fill it with as much water, same idea. All right, you're putting now exhaust gas into that into that engine and it's taking up space, which means because there's less oxygen and fuel, there's less potential energy. Eventually, the heat will be dispersed throughout the metal and cool down. At the same time, the exhaust gas, all right, is another matter to absorb heat, all right? So it's kind of like putting ice cubes in like a hot bowl of soup or something like that. It will take away, all right, uh, a lot of the heat. And that's how an EGR works generally, all right? It just acts as a way to eliminate how much heat you can make, all right? And another interesting thing about an EGR is it does other jobs as well. EGRs, all right, uh, bring in exhaust gas, and sometimes that exhaust gas has unburnt particles in it, little bits of fuel that weren't fully burned. And when it's brought back into the engine and reburned, it actually actually uh, has a small ability to help reduce carbons and hydrocarbons. All right. So um, let's see. Where can I? What can I explain? Let's just do this little illustration here. This is a modern engine in transverse. This is how engines are in cars. All right. What you have here, all right, is your exhaust manifold right here. Okay. And this is, you know, your intake manifold. Let's say. This is your throttle body, the engine's throttle. This is the big pipe going down to your air cleaner. What you have here is a little tiny thin line, almost like a brake line. All right, and um, what's going to happen is the engine has a high vacuum at idle here. Because this plate right here, your throttle's closed, has a lot of pressure trying to bring in air. All right, and therefore, if an EGR is activated, it's not really going to bring in a whole lot of exhaust gas because as with my little illustration here, if there's not a lot of vacuum, this little needle valve is not going to be open too much. But there's usually an intermediary here. So let me see if I can uh, uncap my pen here so I can show you what I'm talking about. 
Okay. What we normally have is a little thing called a solenoid. Now, a solenoid, all right, is essentially, all right, uh, a little fancy way of saying it's a simple uh, electromechanical valve, all right. Um, it's a little little device. And engines that idle normally don't have their EGRs activated because they're not really going to be producing too much heat, all right, and there's not, therefore, so much nitrogen particles to deal with. So uh, the solenoid uh, tends to be closed unless it's really, really cold mornings. All right. Like I said, it's strange that exhaust gas will actually help a cylinder head run cooler. But when it's really, really cold out in the wintertime and your engine needs to warm up quick, quick uh, it's designed so that the EGR valve will open up. The solenoid opens up and uh, the EGR will open up. All right, uh, so that that slightly warmed exhaust air from your exhaust manifold can make its way into the intake manifold and uh, help warm up your engine quicker. The only other time that an EGR valve is closed or deactivated the whole system is when you floor your car. When you put your pedal down to the metal, what's going to happen is the car was going to know, hey, this guy needs power really quick. So the EGR valve unfortunately reduces the power output of a motor. What it will do it was simply just shut off the solenoid here from allowing any air to the EGR and the spring mechanism will essentially close down the needle valve and you will run just pure air and the engine will have all the power it could possibly have. All right, um, but just basically, let me explain this illustration here. Um, when the engine's at idle, this plate's closed right here. There's a lot of vacuum going on right here. Not so much going on right here because there's not a lot of air being drawn into the motor. So therefore, like I said, the spring's mostly closed, not a lot of exhaust gas, seeps out from the exhaust manifold, goes into the EGR and works its way into the intake manifold. This is a little passage here. That's all that is. All right. That's basically all right. Uh, the general aspect of an EGR. When you give your car more gas, you start putting the pedal down. This plate opens up, more air gets drawn through. Now all of a sudden, the vacuum in here is starting to drop, but there's starting to be somewhat of a suction force down here in this main pipe. That suction force draws in, or at least tries to draw in air through this little like brake line type of a pipe. And really all it's doing is creating a suction force, lifting up the diaphragm and letting all the exhaust gas go its way out into all right, the motor here. All right, now modern cars have electronic fuel injection. And when the EGR is activated, the car knows, hey, you know what? There might be some unburnt particles in here. We might have some issues all right, with you know little bits of carbon, fuel, and other things coming from the exhaust system and to the engine. So what it does is it will slightly advance the ignition timing, all right, and also slightly lean out the air fuel mixture. All right, well, like I said, that means you have a little less fuel per air being injected into the motor because you're making up for some of the unburnt particles from the exhaust. And the reason why you need to advance your timing is because now you have more things that need to be burned. Ignition timing, just trying to explain it simply, is that when it's uh, it directly, you know, at top dead center, all right, that means that the piston has reached its highest point and as closest is going to be to the cylinder head, all right? The piston and the cylinder head are essentially really, really smashed together, all right? And as that piston starts to work its way down again, all right, that's, you know, after it's top dead center. Before top dead center is when the piston's working its way back up, all right? So... You want your ignition to fire a little bit before the time period where the piston isn't moving up or down, but is stationary at the closest it will be to the cylinder head. All right. You want to do that so that all that little bit of so air and fuel have time to burn and combust before they have to start changing direction again. All right. And the more air and fuel you have, sometimes it takes more time, you know, so you're going to need to advance your timing a little bit so you can burn up all those particulates. All right, and that's essentially why the uh, ignition timing is advanced. But here's an old trick. Back in the old days, what people used to do is they just simply used to um, plug this, usually take like a little golf tee and plug the vacuum pipe, and they would actually be able to essentially cheaply and easily and also reversibly uh, deactivate your EGR so your engine would have all the power it would have all the time. This is an old EGR. Now a lot of EGR systems have replaced the actual EGR vacuum assembly here with uh, with uh, essentially another solenoid, which is electromechanically controlled to adjust how much uh, exhaust gas to allow into the motor. Makes things a bit more complicated. All right, now you're relying on electronics rather than simple mechanicals. But 
yeah, generally that's how an EGR works. All right, it's designed to reduce your weird little nitrogen particles that create smog and acid rain. And that's that.